If you spend any time on Pinterest at all, I'm sure you've seen these mesmerizing paint pours. Well, in today's video, I wanna show you how to do paint pours on your furniture, so stay tuned. So with paint pours, there are a few different techniques you can use. You can do direct pour, you can do dirty pour, and we're going to do both of these in today's video. We're going to start with these wooden canvases as it's a great way to demonstrate this technique. And as you can see, I've propped it off on a little paint jar so it can, the paint, when, we, when it starts dripping, it can drip down. Okay, so we have that set up. So now we're going to get our paint ready. We're going to be mixing up our uh, paint colors with some uh, primer. And the reason we are using primer is it, it, it acts as a pouring medium because what it does, it helps the colors from not blending too much as well as um, make sure that the paint doesn't crack when it dries. If you were just be pouring straight paint, you would get a lot of crackling happening in your finish. If you were to mix it with water, you'll end up getting a lot of mixing and blending of colors. So first off, we're going to use three colors today. Simplicity, Vintage Cupcake, and Hurricane. Now I'm going to pour some of the paint into these cups. And it's not an exact science, but I would say start with about two parts paint and one part primer. So I'm not going to measure it out, but I'm just gonna squeeze the paint into the cup. And just a little tip, um, when you're doing these paint pours, you wanna avoid using too much of a dark color. So if you're gonna use a black, such as licorice, you wanna make sure that you only use a little bit of it. Otherwise it just gets really overpowering. You definitely always wanna include a white, such as simplicity or vanilla frosting or crinoline. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some of the primer here. Okay, we're gonna use these little stir sticks to mix it really well together. You wanna make sure that it's all blended really well together. And you might notice that you get some air bubbles when you do this, but we have a little trick to deal with that later. So don't worry, that'll all work itself out. And you wanna make sure that the consistency of the colors that you're using is all similar. So you don't want to have one that's much thicker than another one. Okay, so if you notice that one is a little bit too thick, then just add a little bit more of the primer. Okay, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna take another cup, and now we're going to pour these three colors into this one cup. This is gonna be for our dirty pour. I'm gonna start with some white. And just so you know, this gets pretty messy. Some people wonder if you can do this with kids, and. Yeah, you can do it with kids, but definitely under adult supervision. It does get really messy. So the Hurricane is quite a dark color, so I'm not gonna use too much of the Hurricane. Because I don't want it to get all gray. Okay, so are you ready for the paint pour? What we're going to do is we're gonna turn it upside down on the wooden canvas. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute so that it all comes down. And then we're gonna lift it up and see what happens. All right, 
Let's see what happens. It's always a surprise. You cannot plan these things at all. Yeah, I like it. I like that. It looks fun. Okay, so then you can slowly move your canvas around to move the paint. Look how fun that looks. I love how unpredictable these pores are. You can always add a little bit of extra. To the corners if you miss those. Because I want to show you one more really cool trick. And that is that, you know, some people, when they do these paint pours, you'll see that they're using silicone mixed in. And that is to create cells, which are really fun. However, silicone is not archival and it will stay in your finish and you never know what it's going to do over time. So it might turn out that it goes yellow after a while and you definitely don't want that if you're doing it on furniture. So what I would suggest is some rubbing alcohol. This is just pure rubbing alcohol in a squeeze bottle. And you can lightly spritz and you'll see these cool cells that it creates and it pops the air bubbles. You don't want to do it too much because then it'll start getting too liquidy and it'll all blend kind of together. Now you can use, you can leave your drips like this when you're doing on a canvas, but you can also use a paintbrush and just add make sure you get all the edges here and the paint will continue to drip so you want to make sure you're putting it on an even surface all right so we're gonna let that dry it's going to take a while to dry and then I want to show you a different pouring technique so for our next canvas we're going to do a direct pour so that's different from the dirty pour in a way that I will show you. Again, we're going to start by mixing our colors together with primer. So this time I'm using Pea Coat, which is our darkest navy blue. Not using too much of that color. Cranberry Sauce, which is a beautiful cranberry red. And I'm using Simplicity again, so I'm just going to reuse the same cup here. Just add a bit more. So again, we're doing about two parts of paint, one part of primer, but you can definitely vary it up if that's not thin enough for you. You can always add more primer. And then again, you want to mix it really well together. And these paint pours are really fun to do on drawer fronts or on something like a, a coffee table. You can really create some really fun, unique, artistic looks with this. So what's different about a direct pour versus a dirty pour is that with a direct pour, you're pouring directly onto your surface instead of mixing it in a cup and then pouring it on. Okay, so there are different ways you can do this. I'm just gonna start by adding it to a few spots here. Add little bits and pieces of paint 
and then we're gonna tilt the canvas in a little bit to move the paint around. Adding some lines. I want a little bit more of the pea coat. Okay. Now we're just gonna move it around. And you'll see that it creates less um, mixing or a blending of the colors when you do it this way. So it just depends on what you what you like the most, what look you prefer. That looks pretty good. So now you can also add some little drips if you want. So you can really just play around with this and have fun with it. Okay, let's see if we can move it around a little bit more. Okay, and as you can see, it's pretty messy. So if you don't want to get paint all over your nails or <laughs> over your fingers, then you can always wear gloves if you want. All right, so again, I'm gonna use my little squeeze bottle of um, rubbing alcohol to just get rid of those air bubbles and create some cells. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to just let that dry. And what you can do to finish off a paint pour, if you wanna add some uh, protective coating, I will show you on, let's see. I can show you on this fun one um, that we can cover it with clear coat for extra protection. So clear coat, you wanna make sure you stir it really well before you use it. Clear coat is a zero VOC protective coat that you can put over your furniture and over your home decor projects. Okay, and it's really easy to apply with one of these painting sponges. So all you have to do is just wipe it on and leave it to dry. And you can do three or four thin coats for the best protection, um, but it goes on so super fast. Here, I'll do the sides as well. Okay, and that's that. So um, I would recommend playing around with different colors on some test pieces and then trying it on a coffee table or on a um, draw front, for example, to create some really cool finishes on your furniture. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of us anytime. And thank you so much for watching. Happy painting.